Hi everyone, I am Lois, your friend for forgiveness from Walking Without Skin. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about getting your mojo back after major stress or trauma that has been caused through a change, a challenge or an adversity. In our introductory episode, we talked about how you can move from victim to survivor to thriver and beyond to freedom. And in the following um, uh, episode, we talked about what it's like to be a victim after you've been disrupted, after you've had that trauma, whatever it is, you get all the negative emotions associated with being a victim. Hi, Sophia, thank you very much for being here. So, Today we're going to talk about how we can start managing those emotions that we have when we are a victim. So it's going to be a quick dive into it and I want you to know that there are so many things that you can do. There are so many things you can do to manage your, your trauma. But the first thing you need to do is to acknowledge the situation that occurred and then to accept it and accept the emotions that are associated with that trauma. So it's important to know that there are so many different therapies and exercises and treatments that you can do to manage your trauma and to manage your negative emotions. There are things like breathing exercises, meditation, mindfulness, yoga, uh, EFT, and conventional therapies as well. There is so much that you can do. Uh, and in later episodes, we will discuss some of these in a lot more detail, and we will discuss how to overcome some of the negative emotions in a lot more detail with guest experts. But today it's going to be a little bit of a practical look using visualization. Visualizations. So what happens is we have some kind of trauma, some kind of disaster, challenge, adversity, whatever it is that has happened to us. It can be something serious from being, being raped as I was, losing your business as I did. It could be your house burns down. It could be the loss of a loved one. It could be something less serious. You could just get a, a minor illness or you're feeling isolated and alone or you were bullied. But whatever it is, whatever happens to you, it causes trauma. So what I want you to do today is I want you to pick one thing that is that you are experiencing now or maybe one thing that you experienced in the recent past. One episode, one incident that caused you to become a victim. And before we consider going forward, we need to stop and accept where you are now. How does the situation make you feel? It's all about the feelings and the emotions. So whatever you are experiencing, it is your reality and it's okay to feel that way. Whether it's hatred or anger or disgust or shame or guilt, at that time it's important that you acknowledge it, accept it and feel it. So if you're not quite sure what that emotion is, scan your life, scan your body, scan your day and just see what feels heavy, what feels uncomfortable, what do you think is unpleasant and, and just feel it, really just get it right into your body, into your mind and just feel it. And if you can't quite define it, because defining emotions are not easy, um, or, be, or if you're unable to label it, you can look at the feelings on various emotion wheels. So here we have Pluchik's emotion wheel, and he has six core emotions in the middle of his wheel. And they consist of things like terror, loathing, grief, and rage. 
and then as it radiates to the outside it becomes less intense and it moves to things like fear instead of terror, uh, disgust instead of loathing and annoyance instead of rage. So it's important that we can label exactly what that emotion is. And there are so many ways to find different emotions. You can look at the Plutix wheel, or if you just Google, you can find many, many wheels out there with so many different ideas and concepts and words that describe your emotions and feelings. There's a lot out there that you can find that will help you determine what it is that you are feeling. So life challenges and disruptions in life creates change and this results in a roller coaster of emotions at the beginning and these are mostly neg negative. So we need to understand these emotions, feel these emotions and then finally we'll, we'll be able to let them go. Remember that a negative emotion is there to protect us. It is a necessary survival mechanism. So negative emotions can serve a purpose uh, and there are many, many benefits such as it could be a neutral defense mechanism. Fear alerts us to further danger. Sadness makes us more compassionate towards other people. Anger can motivate you to take positive action. Envy and jealousy can be motivators. Frustration can propel you forward to take some kind of action. And, you know, it also makes you realize that there are other good things in your life. And it make you, makes you understand your values better and understand what is important and meaningful in your life. So the process to put in a negative feeling is to put it into words and then grade it, label it, grade it, and so you can take control of it. So you accept it, you observe it, you grade or rate it, you describe it, and then you can let it go. So I'd like you now to just pick one emotion that you are feeling so that we can play with it. Just one that you may be feeling right now or one that you felt a few days ago or a couple of weeks ago. So just think for a minute, what is one of these emotions that you have felt? And one of the steps in letting go is writing a mantra that you can say to yourself that accepts where you are right now and so it gets you ready for the next step. So for example, I'm confused, but that is okay as I take time to reflect and take care of myself. I am hurt and angry, but I will use these emotions to focus on finding a solution and a new way forward. I feel ashamed, but I did the best I could with the knowledge that I had. I hate my job, but that is okay because there are many tasks that I do love doing. I am jealous of my colleagues for getting the promotion instead of me, but that is okay as I take time to find the better opportunity that is waiting out there for me. I'm so unhappy right now, hey, but that's okay as I have not yet found what I am looking for. And you will notice I use the word but in each of those phrases because we know that whatever gets said after the word but is what is remembered. The words that come before are forgotten. So I start with a negative and I turn it into a positive. And you too can do that. So once you've labeled that feeling, once you've given it a name, once you sort of understand what that feeling is, it's important that we rate it or grade it. On a scale, I've, I suggest a scale of 1 to 10, but any scale will do, where the lowest point is where it's not so bad. So 0 is, ah, I'm okay with it, whereas 10 is I'm feeling really, really bad about what has happened to me. So rate it. The next thing we want to do is we want to describe this emotion in as much detail as we can. I feel like I was punched in the gut. My heart is broken into a thousand shards of glass. I feel like I'm in a pot of boiling water. 
and it's really get to understand it and feel it and really get to to experience that emotion in full color put a color to it a sound to it a smell to it, it smells like rotten eggs uh, it sounds like nails scraping on a blackboard it's as red as hot burning coals so describe it in as much detail as you can and describe an action feeling that fits the emotion i hate you i want to kill you you really upset me and i want to slap you in the face i'm going to ignore you whatever it is just make sure that you don't take that action it's important that you describe it but don't do it and then now we are ready to start letting go we want to let go of these negative emotions so let to let go doesn't mean um, forgetting it and I'm, I want to read a couple of, of quotes and the first one is from Jack Cornfield to let go does not mean to get rid of to let go means to let be when we get to be when we let be with compassion things come and go on their own uh, Eckhart Tolle said whatever you whatever the present moment contains accept it as if you had chosen it always work with it not against it and Marianne Williamson we do not heal the past by dwelling there we heal the past by living fully in the present so don't forget that you're a human it's okay to have a meltdown just don't unpack and live there cry it out and then refocus on what you have refocus on where you are headed an unknown quote so the next step in letting go is to consciously decide what positive feeling you want to replace your negative feeling with and there are hundreds of positive emotions and feelings that you can select from so the idea is to choose three to six emotions that you want to experience in the future and really pick the ones that ignite your passion and spark your mojo and make you feel alive so if you look at the Plutchik uh, uh, wheel uh, he talks of ecstasy and admiration which spans out to joy anticipation optimism love and ceremony and on, and on other wheels so on this wheel for example it starts on the inside with happy and it moves out to playful peaceful hopeful inspired valued content free and another one starts with joy and it expands out to joy to to elated optimistic jovial excited enchanted enthusiastic so wow there are so many different emotions positive emotions that you can find and you will definitely find a few that will describe how you really really want to feel so what i want us to do is i want us to create this vision imagine this positive future where you don't have all this angst and anxiety and pain and suffering so select those three to six that inspire you the most and describe them in the present tense as though you've already achieved them and put yourself in the future and and describe the present tense exactly how you are feeling so envisaging your positive emotions and describing your emotion clearly and vividly can challenge can be challenging it's difficult to put words to these feelings and to be able to describe it so i suggest that we visualize it you know we're very good these days at vision boards at, at having a vision board for our future for our career for our homes for our partners so why not have a vision board for our our emotions and our feelings you are in control of your own thoughts and your own feelings and your own actions and your own reactions so instead of describing the emotions let's create an image or a scene that represents the emotions this mental imagery or, or mental simulation of your possible possible self helps you envisage unlimited possibilities and it motivates you so let's create an image so 
Take a moment, get comfortable in your seat, to close your eyes, gently come into the now, feel your body, feel where you're at, feel every sense, hear the sounds around you, take a few deep calming breaths. Allow yourself to relax. I'm going to speak for the next little while and all you need to do is to listen, to imagine. Simply relax and imagine. Be intuitive. Let your subconscious bring your mojo forward and go with the flow. Don't overthink it. So focus on your general values that you consider to be important in your life. Think about your desired mojo, feeling, emotion. Take a moment to bring that feeling forward and visualize it in your mind's eye. For example, if you are feeling happy in that future place, you may want to visualize a picture of the sun shining or the view from a mountain top. What does it sound like, this emotion? This can be a bit more difficult, but use your imagine, imagination. Maybe it's a, so a favorite song, or the birds chirping, or children laughing, or the sound of the breeze in the trees. What does it smell like? Hmm? Could be freshly cut grass, or the smell of freshly baked bread. <laughs> and what does it taste like? Maybe it's that freshly baked bread or maybe it's a cup of hot chocolate. And what action does this feeling make you want to do? Make you want to run through the fields or play in the rain or lie in the sun? Or maybe you want to hug some, somebody. And finally, what about the physical response and, and feeling? Is it hard or it's soft? Has it got a texture? Where in the body do you feel it? Does it make your heart sore? Or maybe you can't stop grinning. Is your mouth watering? Okay, open your eyes and come back to us. So how and why does this work? The mind cannot distinguish between imagination and reality. Each thought and emotion triggers neurochemicals that stimulate the brain in the same way the thought, whether the thought is past, present or future. Imagining future emotions create neural networks in your brain which form new beliefs and new perspectives. And visualization stimulates the reticular activating system, known as RAS, in the brain which scans your environment looking for new opportunities. You see the world differently and therefore do things differently and you take action. So the RAS, the, the, the example everyone always gives is you've just bought a red car and suddenly you see every red car on the road. So create this visual image and create it in reality. Cut out pieces of paper, get onto your computer, be creative and really create these visual images and put yourself into the image. Get a photo of yourself smiling and being happy, whether you're walking on the beach or sitting on the side of the lake, in a forest, in the, at, at a waterfall. Maybe it's the colors and the sounds of the water that makes you happy or you just feel like you're floating in the breeze or you're on top of that mountain top soaring above the clouds or maybe you you feel like a balloon just bubbling along happily um, or, or maybe you feel that you're a cloud or you're soaring with or above the clouds so create that visual image it's so important that you can see yourself in this particular place and then put it into words create an affirmation Take that description, take that picture that you've created and put it into words. What I do is I recorded my affirmation and I put it on my uh, phone as my alarm clock. So every morning I wake up to my positive affirmation. It is so beneficial. And you know, ask yourself, what is the purpose of these feelings? What do they serve you? 
What are the benefits of the emotions? Does it make you feel more confident, happier, more positive? What skills does it give you? What about your mindset? So, what does it mean to you? What does this emotion, emotion enable you to do or achieve? So, I've got a sentence that I'd like you to complete. And it says, I am or I feel. And then you put in your, your emotion or feeling. And I can. And you put in a skill or an ability. Um, and you can then say, I am or I have. And you then describe the end result. So, for example, I am or I feel valued. And I can, as a result, manage my small business without any problems. And this gives me, uh, or it provides me with a great standard of living. So it's the feeling, what it enables me to do, and the outcome. Or you can say, oh, I am so happy and it's because I'm doing the work that I love and this enables me to buy that wonderful house and live on the sea. So think about that sentence and create this future reality for you. And then with, together with your picture and your recording, you want to display it. You want to put it out there where you can see it as often as possible. Put it on your computer, on your phone, print it out, put it on your mirror, wherever you can see it and get hold of it readily. So when you fall back into one of those negative feelings, you can just grab this picture, you can look at it and you can put yourself in that positive environment. It keeps you motivated, it keeps you stimulated and it's just a visual reminder of what you want to be and where you want to go. So do create that that uh, imagery and display it place put it somewhere where you'll see it all the time uh, somewhere peaceful in an uncluttered location where it will stand out uh, and you know the exposure to a vision board can serve as a prime reminder for your change that you're wanting to create and then also share it your, your mojo, your, your energy impacts the entire world and by sharing this feeling you share the energy and the whole world benefits and the people you share it, share it with can support you in getting and maintaining your mojo. Res research has shown that people who are willing to open up and share with others are healthier, happier and just take your mojo as a special gift and also create a gratitude statement. I am so grateful that I am in this wonderful, peaceful environment that I've created for myself. I am so happy that this is working for me. So why it works is neuroplasticity. We've heard all about it. Your brain's ability to reorganize itself. Your brain is constantly being reshaped by your daily experiences, your behaviors, your thoughts, your words, your actions, your environment, and of course your emotions. And new neurons reshape and rewire your brain, and old ones not used are extinguished. So change your belief around unpleasant emotions, and you alter the neurochemistry and the structure of your brain. Create this visual in your mind before you can attract it into being. A it's a visual reminder of your desired mojo and ensures that you put your attention on it. It keeps you motivated. And this raises your vibration and it makes you more optimistic. So I hope that there are some tips in there that you can create, but I really, really believe that a vision board of your emotions is one of the most powerful things that you can do. And it's because it's visual, it's there all the time, you can refer to it all the time, you can change it and update it at any time. And do put yourself into that visual. So I invite you all to join me at Walking Without Skin. I have a web page, walkingwithoutskin.com, and you can book a free 30-minute call with me 
where we can discuss your journey, where we can discuss your aspirations and your dreams and discuss how we can overcome any trauma that you may be facing. So walkingwithoutskin.com and you can find me there. You could also find my book by the same name, Walking Without Skin. And you can find me on a Facebook page with the same name as well. You can also reach me on LinkedIn and on Instagram. And I would really love to connect with you to help you find that peace. And most of all, to help you find that happiness, that peace, that freedom, and to fly free. So please do join me at Walking Without Skin. Um, and I'm going to just and just give me two minutes. Beautiful song written for Walking Without Skin by Steve Siler from Music for the Soul and performed by Denise Green. So thank you very much everybody and fly free.